Hey guys, and welcome to another MIDO Compositions tutorial. And this time we're going to cover a rather exciting topic, um, and it is the edit mode. Now, this is the uh, fourth tutorial in the first steps and preparation series. And yeah, let's just open up a new Blender window. Now, um, before doing anything else, actually, let's go straight into edit mode. Or no, let's just delete the cube and let's add a monkey head. And now something I forgot to tell you is that whenever you add an object, okay, you can always uh, make a few adjustments in a context menu, so to say, okay? But as soon as you do something with this monkey, for example, something like this, you can see it disappears. And now a new menu for the translating um, option uh, um, shows up. So. Uh, yeah, just keep, keep that in mind, whenever you add an object, you have only one chance to make a few basic adjustments and after it is gone. And with your monkey, it isn't very um, spectacular, those adjustments. However, if you delete it and if you add a circle, you can see that you have a couple of options here. You can um, change the amount of vertices or the resolution of your circle, so to say. If you go to zero, that is impossible, it will always go to three. And now you can see you have a circle with uh, with a uh, three vert vertices. Um, it's not really a circle, but rather a triangle, but you know what I mean. If you go to four, five, six, it'll just make the circle more and more circular, basically. Instead of a polygon. Okay. And you can also adjust the radius. You can always do that with a scaling afterwards and applying the scale, but this is just much faster. You can fill it or you can align it to the view. So if you go like this and now if you align to view once again, you can see it is always in a right angle to your view. Now, and also you can also change location here with um, set values or let's move it back to close to zero so we can see it. You can also change the rotation and so on and so forth. Now let's once again add our monkey head because that's what we need for this tutorial. And let's also open up our properties panel in case we need it. I don't think we do, but anyway. And now let's go into edit mode with our tab key on our keyboard. And also let's change to orthographic view. Perfect. Now, um, let me just explain to you a few basics and a few expressions. Didn't I just toggle into orthographic view? Here we are. Okay. Um, each of those points or intersections are vertices. This is a vertex, this is a vertex, and so on. And the lines that actually connect two vertices, those lines are called um, edges. And this plane that is formed by, in this case, four vertices, uh, this plane is called a face, okay? And since it is um, made up of four vertices, it is called a quad. And something that is made up of three vertices, for example, this face over here, this is called a triangle. Um, pretty obvious, basically. Now, for organic modeling and or just for modeling of things that have to be deformed later on, you want to avoid um, vertice, uh, triangles wherever possible. Always try to use quads. This has a number of reasons. Um, I'm gonna talk, we're gonna talk more about this later. But for now, just keep in mind, whenever you can, try to avoid triangles. For example, here, if I'd have to animate this, I would also um, take three vertices. You can see, you could also make a quad. So just hit your F for fill, and you can see now it is a quad. Control Z. But uh, since the eye is not really deformed, it doesn't really matter. Anyway. Um, today we're going to focus on those first three groups, transform, deform, and add. Um, let's just go to a front view. And actually, as you might have noticed already, I don't like it if the monkey just stares into the sky. So let's select everything. Let's first go into wireframe, view, wireframe mode so we can see what is behind. Let's um, um, press the B key on our keyboard so we can border select things and now everything's selected. Now let's go to side view once again, let's rotate it a little bit um, 
Okay, and that's much better. Now, the first three options are pretty much the same as in object mode, just that now they don't affect the whole mesh, but just on the vertices you've selected. For example, let's select the eyebrows over here and over here. And let's move them with G, let's move them up a little. Okay. Now if you go into object mode, you can see your changes also are also applied to object mode with tab back to edit mode. Same goes for rotate, of course, if you rotate if you rotate your vertices. Or if you scale them. Exact same thing as in object mode. Now shrink and fatten is a little bit different. And this is actually kind of tricky to understand. Um, first of all, I'm going to explain you what a normal vector is, because um, this function is, in my opinion, as far as I can tell, based on normals. So whenever you have a face like this, Blender automatically calculates um, a normal vector. And the normal vector is a um, vector, it's so to say like an arrow, that goes up from your, up from your uh, face in a right angle. So let me just go to the um, Grookey's pencil settings here, or functions, sorry, and let's just draw in a normal vector, okay? And this normal vector actually is in a right angle to your face, and also in a right angle to the face from over here. I hope uh, wherever you're from you're using the same um, um, symbols for a right angle. As you can see, uh, <laughs> it's supposed to be a bit closer to um, to this arrow, but you know what I mean, right? And if you shrink or fatten things with with uh, Alt S, by the way, shrink or fatten is Alt S. You can um, let's just select everything and hit Alt S. You can scale each face along their normal vectors, their normals. You can pretty well see it down here where the mouth is. Every face is scaled along their normals. Okay, now push and pull. This is also a bit weird. Um, I'm gonna explain it as well as I can. If you um, push the vertices away, it looks kind of as if the mesh is inflated. And if you pull them in, it is like... It somehow reminds me on, on, on like a big sun or some big star in the universe just collapsing, you know? And... Um, those are both functions you usually don't use so often, um, but you can see they can be handy in some cases, and they look pretty funny. Now, edge slide. In order to know what edge slide does, you'll need to know first what an edge loop is. Now, as you can see, those vertices are connected in a certain pattern. Now, you have like one line connecting this vertex with this one and this one and so on. And in order to actually select a couple of them, just um, hit your Alt key and then right click on on an edge in between two vertices and you can see it selects a whole line and this everything that is connected to this to this one in a straight or more or less straight line is called an edge loop and now if you go to edge slide or you can also um, use this function with hitting Control E and then selecting it in this uh, menu you can actually move it along the vertices, uh, along the edges, I'm sorry. Now one thing to note here is that, let's just move it away a little bit. Now if I use Control E and Edge Slide, you can see it follows um, the upper edges until it reaches this intersection point here basically, and then it follows the lower ones. But this is not what it always does, okay? As soon as you, um, as soon as you Accept this position, for example, with a left click. And now, if once again you hit Control E Edge Slide, the, the new intersection point is now where it was, um, where the vertices were the last time. So you can no longer reach that position over here unless you use some other command like G, for example. Uh, this is quite important to know. With Control Z, I undo all those things. Perfect. And then noise. This is also a bit difficult to explain. 
what it basically does um, well, let's just try it. Let's select everything and let's hit noise and you can see nothing happens but there um, there's a warning displayed right there and it says mesh has no material or texture assigned. Now noise actually deforms your meshes, uh, your vertices or displaces your vertices according to a texture. Now since we did not yet cover textures I'm just gonna real quick uh, set one up and I'm gonna show you how to do those things uh, later. very simple to set up a basic texture. Now you can see this texture and you can see it, it's got, it's a cloud texture by the way, it's got black and white values and now according to those values the, the vertices are dis, dis, uh, displaced. So now if you go to noise you can see it gets distorted and even moved quite heavily and as I said it is, it does that according to those um, black and white values. Control set, control set until we're back to where where we where we were. Okay, now let's just delete this material. Actually, in order to delete it, you have to go to object mode, delete material, and let's go back into edit mode. Okay, and now a smooth vertex. This is also um, rather cool. Now this has nothing to do with. Let's go back to object mode with this smoothing option over here. This just defines how it is shaded. Okay, while this one actually changes the geometry. If we hit it, your mesh becomes smoother and smoother like this, okay? Now, you see we overdid it quite a bit, however, this is pretty good to show you what it does. It basically tries to even out the uh, angles between two edges as g well as possible, so if you do that an uh, infinite number of times, it should at some point be nearly um, round or not. Um, it kind of depends how about the, the vertex density, so to say. The more vertices you have in one area, the pointer it, it becomes. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, just play around with it a little bit and you'll get the hang of it in no time. Control Z and you can see uh, once again Control Z. Oh and one thing, I just made a mistake, I can see. You don't have to hit this button numerous times, just um, change the number of iterations down here. Okay, now we're already at the add functions. Um, for that actually our monkey is not very ideal so let's just delete all the vertices and now I'm going to show you another cool thing, you can also add geometry in edit mode. Shift A and let's add a cube. Now this cube is not exactly where I want it so let's go Control Z, Shift C to reposition our 3D cursor and now once again Let's hit Shift A and let's add a cube. Now, with those functions, you can actually add geometry. For example, you can select all those top vertices and and use this extrude function. You can see shortcut E. This is a very important one, so try to memorize it. Now, if you hit E, you can actually see it um, extrudes um, the face along its normal vector. If you don't want that. Let's once again go to extrude. You can always just hit the set button once again and now it is a free extrude so to say. And as you can see whenever you extrude it, the face in the in here will be um will be kept so to say. Now if you delete this with delete, um actually as you can see the delete function is quite different from object mode. You can delete vertices, edges, faces, all and so on. Now what vertices does, if you delete vertices, it will delete everything because it will delete those vertices and therefore also the um, connecting edges and therefore also the um, faces that are created by those edges and vertices. Let's just try it. Delete vertices, everything's gone. Control Z. Delete edges. You can see only the edges are gone and the face they form, however, or the f faces they um, touch, however the edges that are not in any way connected to, to those edges that are not selected will stay. And now with delete face, only the face will disappear. And as you can see now, in those, on those, let's call them floors for now, or edge loops actually, 
on this edge loop, this isn't filled, there is no face in it, okay? And that is quite cool because if you have a face, you'd get horrible rendering results because of wrong shadow shading effects and so on. So whenever you have those troubles, try a few things. You can try a few things to get rid of those, those um, rendering issues. And one of them is to check that there are no faces where there aren't supposed to be any faces. Okay, now let's just delete this one. Um, vertices. Also, one thing to note, if you just select, for example, this top um, edge loop, and now you've got to delete faces, because there's no face selected, nothing will happen, okay? So you have to go to, for example, vertices, and um, yeah. One other thing, actually, um, if you want to add a face, just select the vertices that form the face and hit F. Now you can see it is closed once again. So you just filled in the face, therefore F for fill. Now with subdivide, you can actually subdivide your your face into several faces. So let's select everything and let's hit subdivide. Or another easy way to um, do that is to uh, hit W on your keyboard and then got a few options here and let's go to subdivide. And you can see you've got lots, uh, lots of more vertices than before. Control Z to undo that. And now we also have loop cut and slide. Uh, by the way, subdivide. Um, if you want to have more geometry to, to make it appear smoother or rounder or less, um, well, let's say polygonic, less etchy, just um, use a subdivision surface over here. I'm going to show you how to do that later. But just um, don't just overuse this subdivide function because if you have uh, a lot of vertices, it is hard to control all of them. Okay. Oh, and by the way, one other thing. If you hit subdivide, instead of just clicking it numerous times, you can just increase the number of cuts down here. And you can also increase, this, increase the smoothness. And the fractal. Well, this is... Oh, was pretty cool. This is just kind of an auto displacement of your vertices. For example, if you want to make like um, a stone or something, I'm sure this is very handy. And there are a few options over here. So let's just, and as always, if you move it, for example, you can see the menu is lost. And with Ctrl Z, that doesn't change anything. Okay, now, um, loop, cut, and slide. This is also pretty cool. Let's say you want to add another vert, uh, add other edge loop over here, for example. Just hit this button here or the Alt uh, Control R. So if you hit Control R, nothing happens. But now if you hover over an edge or an edge, for example, here, you can see um, it indicates where it's it indicates the position where the loop cut would appear if right now you would press your left mouse button. Same goes for over here, or here, or here, or whatever, wherever you want it. So let's add it over here. And now that I actually accepted this choice by left clicking, I can now move it along those edges. And then with another left click, I can position it. However, I can also add several loop cuts, loop cuts at once. In order to do that, just hit once again Control R. You can see those, this, those pink lines once again. And now if you scroll your mouse wheel, you can actually add loop cuts or delete them. However, if you add more than one loop cut at a time, and now if you um, accept with left mouse click, you cannot move them in any way, as opposed to one loop cut. However, you can always, and don't forget this one, you can always just with Alt right click select loop cut and slide, slide it around with edge slide. Or with Control E, edge slide. Okay, once again, let's go back a few steps. <clears throat> now, I just noticed that I forgot one, to mention one thing, and that's extrude individual, okay? And the reason I forgot it is because I never use it. If you select this, and if you hit extrude, the normal extrude with E, you can see it actually extrudes this edge with the vertices and it automatically, cre automatically creates a face. Now, if you go to extrude individual, which does not have a shortcut, you can see it just extrudes the individual vertices. Now, this is not very handy because usually if you um, extrude geometry, 
you want to expand it so you want to make it um, connected in some way so an empty face or no face at all isn't very handy so let's just delete those vertices now duplicate is the same as, as we know um, if we if you select let's say this face you hit shift D to duplicate you can see um, you duplicated the face and as opposed to extrude region it is not connected to the let's call it a parent mesh okay now let's delete this once again so like this now those last two options that we're going to cover in this tutorial those last two op options are actually quite tricky and as you can see spin and screw what you can do you can kind of extrude um, a certain geometry around an axis and in case of the screw modif uh, screw function also you can also um, well make like a spiral thing I'm just gonna show you how to do that let's delete everything and let's also delete our um, grease pencil data block to we don't need it now in order to make use one of those you need two things first of all you need some kind of geometry um, for example let's say we'd like to model a glass um, a glass of wine or a glass that is used to drink wine so let's go into front view and let's just um, um, create the um, outline of this glass so let's control click or no, let's just say let's add a cube shift a cube um, my fault let's add a plane now let's rotate around the x-axis for 100 for 90 degrees I'm sorry x-axis now let's just um, select those two vertices let's go to snap and let's move them over here and now let's just actually let's delete this vertex over here with delete vertex like this okay now let's just roughly form the shape of a glass and actually let actually let's deactivate the snapping tool because we don't need it and I'm just going for actually I'm going for a small fat wine glass because those are the glasses I like the most because I like heavy wine um, that's actually already what we need no more and now let's we need something else in order to use the spin tool we need an axis around which it is rotated okay so at least I believe we do let's just select everything and let's go to spin oh no you don't okay let's go control set because I for forgot one thing you need to look onto the axis around which you want to rotate your geometry so in this case we have to go to top view with numpad 7 and now this is pretty cool you can just hit spin and it will spin it around your 3d cursor so you can reposition your axis however you want uh, spin and now you can see it actually did what we want it created the glass however it only created one quarter of the glass um, so let's see the, let's look at the context menu first of all you can um, increase or decrease the number of steps so right now it has one two three four five six seven eight nine ten steps or actually nine steps because the first is the first one is the one uh, is our base so to say now you can see um, degrees it just covered 90 degrees it means just a quarter of a whole circle so let's go to top view once again and let's uh, increase this to 360 and now you can see we've got a our wine glass however nine steps is not enough so let's put this to um, four times nine which would be 36 and now we've got a pretty decent glass model especially if you consider the amount of time we invested so um, yeah keep in mind the spin tool is your friend if you need to make um, an object an object that is rotated around an axis or something okay now let's delete everything let's go to front view once again and now let's make a screw let's model a screw now this might sound very frightening at first and like a lot of work however if you know how it isn't really that difficult 
So, what we need to do, we need to model, um, if you know what a screw looks like, you know that it's made of, 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 of a thread, with a thread, and that a thread has, has several, um, you know, like teeth. Um, the funny thing is I'm a mechanic, so I should know what it is. However, in English, I don't know. So, let's just model one of those. Let's actually, once again, add a plane. R, X, 90. Select those two vertices. Hit Alt M at center. And now you got a triangle. Let's select everything and let's move it out here, around out here. Now, one thing is important, and that is that you can see that this vertex is exactly on this line and this vertex is on this line, okay? And the reason why that is important, I'm going to show you that in a second. Now let's um, select everything and let's hit screw and you can we'll see nothing happens. And it says you have to select a string of connected vertices too. So in order to do that, let's just duplicate this, shift D, and let's move it over here. And this is our string of connected vertices, okay? Now if we select everything and if we hit screw, you can see it did exactly what we wanted it to do. However, um, it didn't know whether we want to just extrude the triangle or also the line, so it did both. And now you can just once again increase the amount of steps to make it a um, higher resolution, so to say, and the amount of turns. And now, let's say an average um, screw has around let's say 20, 20, um, 20 turns, and you can see you've got yourself a screw. Um, this is not really a, a technically correct shape of a, a thread. However, that isn't a big deal. And now you can just model the head of the screw and you can close it up down here and your screw is finished. Um, one thing we have to get rid of though is this middle thing. A uh, couple of options to do that, actually. You can select one vertex and then hit Control L. And you can see it selects everything connected to that geometry. Or you can just hit L alone with hovering over your um, geometry you want to select. Like this or like this. And if you select something with L, you can see the previous selection will not be deselect deselected. Okay. So let's hit L. Delete vertices and they are gone. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, that's it already. Um, time passes so fast, it's been half an hour again. Already half an hour. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. When I discovered this screw and spin tool, I was pretty excited, I must say. Um, we're going to take a look at all those other um, functions and buttons in the next tutorial, so stay tuned for that. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or questions or whatever, as always, post it in the comments. Um, I'm always glad to get some feedback. Thank you for watching and see you next time.